What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're going to go ahead and have a look at the brand new Pirate Alliance Kizuna Clash versus Blackbeard. Um, we're going to look at the different event and talk about like what each stage actually does in this event. Unfortunately with the official information that we have been getting access to we actually don't know exactly what each of these stages do we have an idea of the gimmicks that we're going to be encountering but unfortunately we don't know how many turns of each of these gimmicks are actually going to be present so we can make some pretty safe bets as to how many turns like increased defense or paralysis is going to be but of course take this as a grain of salt with this video because depending on what the amount of turns you know that these specific gimmicks are you may need to alter your characters accordingly to that so hopefully you guys understand but of course we want to just start preparing for it anyway because i mean we've got to prepare a team so when it comes out we can kind of understand what we have to do in order to get around this boss and as it is stated here it is a super boss so this is one of those ones where you have three normal bosses and then you'll have one boss that will rotate between each color and it starts with like a billion hp and every time you kill it it will come back with stronger hp and it's going to be a pretty hard one but of course all of your alliance members are going to be fighting to beat that super boss so let's go ahead and jump into it the first one that we're going to be covering is the regular bosses this is just the regular bosses first um shout out to the worst generation for data mining this information uh, but of course we have an information of like what the gimmicks are but we don't know how many turns they are okay so the regular Kizuna clash 10 star difficulty the super bosses are 15 star difficulty right so the first one is an int boss and you get cooldown for free spirit fighter and driven characters if you guys want to see the actual boosted list in terms of characters that get a lot of cooldown and some stat boost at the start of the quest check the in-game information for that one but for stage two the mini boss will have a rainbow shield for a number of turns typically uh, mini bosses will have like three to four turns they rarely have five turns but if they do then you definitely want to get around that and then also stage three uh there's going to be increased defense for a certain amount of turns uh my guess would be five turns but it could be less because they did say that support sabo the brand new one that just released in the support banner um was, was going to help you in this adventure so it makes sense if it's only two turns but we don't know at this point in time also you get a full board of tandem slots and also tandem slots are counted as badly matching so you just a, a full board of badly matching slots essentially then after a certain HP value, he's going to give you attack down below a certain chain. So you need to have some type of chain lock because also chain coefficient reduction is applied to your crew. So a chain lock is going to be super important for this fight. A way to remove uh, the increased defense, a way to get matching slots, and then a, a way to get around the rainbow shield. So this is the free to play team that we're using here. Um, I'll only be showing free to play teams for the first regular bosses. For the super bosses, I'll show you guys just a regular team that I've just whipped together. Of course, they're not going to be final teams anyway but uh, in terms of this team right here we have this brook who removes six turns of rainbow shield so we can use him on the mini boss stage to get around that and then he also provides uh, an attack boost a really good attack boost and uh, orb boost also for your psi characters so that special alone will pretty much carry that stage two and on the final boss stage we have these two characters otama and frankie Otama actually changes badly matching slots into matching and because you get a full board of tandem slots that are the is not beneficial her special will change them all into matching Frankie gives you a color affinity boost but Otama both uh, Frankie and Otama together both reduce increased defense we have four turns with this Otama and three turns with Frankie so it's up to seven turns of increased defense removal just in case and then we've got Zora who can provide a really good orb boosting effect is a 2.25 times orb boost Big Mom is a chain locker and a 3.5 times captain free to play so she's really good and then roger is a friend captain because he's amazing and a three times attack so the way that you would probably do it is is you'd use like your orb changes and you get color affinity with these two and then you use the attack boost then zora to get the orb boost and then big mom for a chain lock and then with all of these buffs active for a free to play team to do 41 million against a regular boss is really good so this is a really solid team that uh, will work against the first boss so moving over to the second regular boss, 10 star difficulty, we have cooldown reduction to strength, psi, and int, and this is the psi boss. So you basically want to build an int team. Stage two has a perfect hit barrier. That's pretty annoying. And then on stage three, all of your slots are badly matching. Your left side of your field is changed into a, uh, it will just get just given bind for a certain amount of turns. And after a certain HP value, he will give you despair for a certain amount of turns. And there is also an interrupt where if you activate any orb boosting effect, you're given slot bind. 
so pretty annoying obviously so this is the team that we have for a free-to-play team now for getting rid of that bind we have the Rayleigh and the Hody both of which can remove bind on this side of the of the team so depending on how much you get I mean Rayleigh removes four um, Hody removes five and then with sockets that's like 12 turns of bind removal I'm pretty sure that will be okay but the despair is what I don't know I don't know how many uh, turns of despair he's going to inflict uh, Hody at least removes five turns of it which is good and he also provides a 1.75 color affinity to our int and strength characters they also the combination of um, the Garp and the Sengoku can give us a full board of matching slots as well and also that chain boundary effect via Sengoku and then Garp to buff it as well um, so it actually works pretty well in terms of the in the uh, the stage two fight, um, we have to hit the perfect bar in order to break through it. We can switch Roger into into Whitebeard to get an attack and orb boost, and I don't know if normal attacks only is going to be inflicted on stage two. But if they're not, then you can just use Kid Special to get a bit of end of turn damage just to guarantee the kill. Um, it, all, it just really depends on what the boss is really doing. So this should work quite fine. And then on the final boss stage, you switch back into. Um, back into Whitebeard, of course, uh, back into Roger, should I say, and then when you use the special ability of Roger, he's going to buff your attack boost, you'll still have a really small orb boost, you'll have a really good chain boundary, and with all these buffs active, we're going to have the switch effect, we're going to have Hody active, we're going to have these two active, um, and then like a chain boost as well from Rayleigh, so it's like 86 million, 87 million damage for a free-to-play team, it's actually pretty good, um, I, I don't know, of course, because we don't know exactly how many turns of each debuff is going to be applied, but it uh, seems pretty decent for a free-to-play team. So moving on to the last of the regular bosses, this is the Dex variation, 10 star difficulty, cooldown to free spirit, fighter, and cerebral characters. And on stage two mini boss, your slots just change randomly to tandem, bomb, and meat slots, but then they have a slot barrier and you need a strength or a dex slot to break through it. And uh, it's a random amount of hits. We don't know how many, hopefully it's one. If it's one, the team that I'm about to show you will work. If it's not, then I don't know. We may have to alter some characters here. And then on the final boss stage, attack down for a certain amount of turns also a full board of block slots and your slots will be locked so that's good to see and then after you kill him he actually revives with 21 percent of his max health and after a certain hp value he's going to have additional preemptive attacks which will buff the attack down to us to a to a bigger number and also paralysis for a random amount of turns so one thing about this attack down is that my guess is it's going to start off as a five turn attack down and then it's going to go to six turns after a certain hp value because the new ace rare recruit character that came out with the Kizuna Sugo Fest removes six turns of attack down. So I think it makes sense if it is only six turns, but we will have to wait and see. This is the team that we have here today. So stage two, we get the uh, the random slots, of course. Now, ideally, you just use the Cracker Special to get a full board of matching slots, and then you start off as like Dex Luffy, and then you can just switch into the Strength one if you need a Strength slot to break through it. That's ideally how this team would work in order to get around that stage. Not too confident on that though. And then on the uh, last stage, in terms of all of the turns of attack down, we have the Jinbei and also the Kawamatsu to remove three turns each, which equates to six. Uh, after a certain HP value, you get inflicted with Paralysis. Um, the Orochi can remove eight turns of Paralysis. However, before you do any of that, you would want to use Luffy special first. You want to make sure you're getting all of his buffs because they last for two turns and you get those rainbow slots. Remember, your slots will be locked. So if you're able to secure those rainbow slots, they're not going to be changed or anything. So that's super ideal. And then we've got the uh, special ability of the Kuja Pirates, which can provide us with a 1.5 times conditional boost. So with, the, with all of the buffs from the Straw Hats and then the conditional boost, remember last tap also from Luffy and the Straw Hats is going to be super, super powerful. So with the with the Straw Hat Special Active and the Kuja Pirates to get their conditional boost. We're doing around 36 and a half million free to play, but remember with Final Tap of Luffy, that can add a lot more than that, especially if you end up finding a higher last tap level friend captain, that's gonna amplify that damage by a very substantial portion. So again, for raw free to play, it's fine. But of course, if you have summonable units, it's gonna make this team a lot more powerful. Let's have a look at the super boss now. So remember the super boss is way more difficult, 15 star difficulty, int variation first once again fighter driven and free spirit characters are the characters that get that cooldown here stage two now stage two is actually stated very specifically to have like 14 million hp 
So keep that in mind. Um, I do believe the character will run away after turn two, but the thing is, is if you wait after turn one, there's additional gimmicks here, of course. So we can see that stage two, we get our slots changed to tandem, and then we are treated those as, as badly matching, which obviously is bad. And if you don't kill on turn one, you get given a certain amount of attack down inflicted to your team. Now, I have built the teams in such a way that you guys will see in a moment that are just killing them on turn one. And they don't do like billions of damage. I'm just, I'm just saying that these basic teams that I have built, they do a lot of damage. And we want to try and get around this gimmick uh, on turn one because we don't want to deal with it. And then on stage three, change all slots to empty and we're given a certain amount of despair. We don't know how many turns of it it is. Uh, I would expect it to be at a minimum of eight turns. Uh, we don't really know at this point though. So this is the team that we've built and it's not like the most optimal team for a super boss and it's definitely not going to be the team that I'm going to use personally, but I mean, hey, it is a team. So of course, the fact that we have to deal with the, the badly matching tandem slots on stage two, we're just gonna use Roger super type to get a full board of matching slots and then Brooke to give us a bit of a boost. I mean, I don't even know if you need the boost, but it is 14 million damage and we don't know what color the mini boss is on that stage. So this is just to give us a bit of a damage boost there. And then on the final stage, we get the full board of empty slots of course but uh, of course we're going to just use the uh the odin special to get his huge orb boost roger for his massive attack boost um we got wano lord to change them all into the 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 block or the empty slots the empty slots i mean uh, into matching and then uh yamato to change them into wano slots and also get her chain boosting effect and her super type for the chain multiplier as well and we'll have the chain boundary from wano law and of course we are inflicted with despair but roger as a friend captain will completely ignore that for us in this example example here so this does a lot of damage of course like this is doing over 300 million this is not accounting for stat supports not accounting for anything else uh again if we actually know the amount of turns of despair you may be able to just switch characters out and just run supports instead to get around enemy gimmicks as i said this is a very bare bones basic team definitely not going to be the team that i actually use but just something to think about in terms of getting around enemy gimmicks as well as doing a lot of damage towards the enemy so now moving on to the second super boss variation which is the psi one 15 star difficulty once again strength psi and characters receive that cooldown stage two once again has around that 14 million hp value and you'll get you're just given a random amount of turns of paralysis uh, we don't know how many it is my assumption is it's five but we don't know and after turn one your beneficial effects are removed and you're given a 1.2 attack boost for a certain value of turns and then on the final stage full board of block slots and a increased defensive value we don't know how much that is again my my assumption for this one specifically it's going to be either two turns or seven that's my guess like I, I think it might be either one of those hard to say at this point though i think it's probably going to be seven turns though really difficult to say but this is the team that we're building here now this doesn't even have six characters on it because i really didn't know what to put for the last unit here but with switch abilities of roger and new gate we're able to generate like a lot of slots for our team and also get like the attack and all boost and stuff and having two of them means that like we can get both amazing effects and we'll talk about that in a moment but of course the paralysis on stage two uh the shanks and buggy have that crewmate effect to re reduce one turn of paralysis and then their special removes additional four turns of paralysis as well as giving us an attack boost so that's gonna help us a lot with getting through that stage as well i mean the attack boost doesn't matter because of roger and newgate but just saying like this is just a full int based striker team that uh is going to do a lot of damage we also have the um Doflamingo. Now, Doflamingo is here basically just because he can remove increased defense by two turns. With double special activation, it goes to four turns. Bellamy support, you can reduce another two turns. So this dude by himself can reduce six turns of increased defense. And that should be enough. But of course, we don't know the value. And of course, once we do know, these teams are going to be changing uh, the way that they're going to be built. And uh, Yamato as a, as a captain, because we can get access to super type to make our damage output against Psy enemies increased. Plus, as a captain we can have her um get the like the huge boost of course and the fact that we can get her special to change the block slots on the final stage into matching which is great uh well, like the block slots not really into matching but into the one or slots just in general which give us even more damage towards the enemy and you can see even with like all these buffs active uh this is going to have like the three times attack three times orb boost 2.5 color affinity uh the one or slots the chain boost and then her super type to add the chain multiplier effect if we have a way to get below 50 percent we can get even more damage because because of her captain ability so it just depends on how things go but in theory this is going to be a pretty nice team but again it's not going to be my exact team for this kizuna just want to make that known and then the last of the super bosses is going to be the dex variation 15 star difficulty fighter 
Free Spirit and Cerebral units will be receiving the cooldown. Stage 2, you get a full board of bomb slots and then they're going to be treated as badly matching. And if you don't kill on turn 1, you get given a chain lock for a certain amount of turns, which is bad. We don't want that. On stage 3, full board of block slots once again. And you also get special bind for a certain amount of turns. And once again, the Sabo support that recently got released. His support removes two turns of special bind on the final boss stage. Makes sense if you get given two turns, but it could be seven turns and then you got to use a five turn remover on top of that. It's hard to say what they're going to do right now, but that is just a couple of options as to what I think it could be. It's hard to say. So this is the team that I have built here. And once again, this is probably not going to be my final team because it is a little bit scuffed, but it does a lot of damage once again. So with this team, we are dealing with uh, stage two, which has the, the bomb and the badly matching slots. We're just going to use the Luffy special. We get the, the obviously the dual captain and the, the, this boss doesn't say that he revives. So it's fine for us to use the Luffy special here. In my opinion, we get the rainbow slots. We'll be able to get all of those buffs active and then hopefully use up as many rainbow slots as possible because when we reach the last stage we get our slots changed into block slots and if we don't remove all of those rainbow slots then we can't change them into wano but as long as the two captains can get removed that's fine because we have our toki special which we ideally want to use on stage two as well for our two captains so as long as these two orbs are removed so that they can be changed into block slots that would be okay so we're using wano law to change them into matching of course we have the sabo special which can provide some color affinity he's going to be a really nice addition to the team um, and i don't know how the interaction works if you use his special then luffy special first not really too sure how that interaction works because ideally you want to use his special stage two but if you use luffy special stage two i don't know how that works to get the perfect buff active i don't think you're actually able to get it. i'm not 100 sure how the interaction actually works might have to test that one out either way we get color affinity by this guy and ideally get the chain boost on the following turn don't think it works that way but if it does that's wicked and uh, on the last stage we have boa to remove special bind and she also changes block and bomb into matching which is awesome and locks our slots but that doesn't really matter but she also removes the special bind which is the reason why she's here uh, mainly on the final boss stage we're going to have these two characters at the top with the odin super type to give them 1000 base attack boost they get the guaranteed wano slots which is absolutely wicked and then we have have a toki special giving them the 3.5 times attack and orb boost we have color affinity ideally chain boost uh, and then we also have chain boundary active and we get a pretty good amount of damage but of course these are just some regular units that you could put on the team. You might not want to use this. And of course, if you do have Final Tap Luffy Friend Captain with a very high level last tap, this is probably going to kill a lot of units. <laughs> this is going to kill a lot of the boss variations moving forward. If you optimize it a bit more, you could definitely get way more damage, of course, just randomly throwing these units together. Uh, I'm really excited to see how the team building for this Kizuna Clash is going to be moving forward. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So there we go. That's the breakdown of all variations, including Super Boss for Super Boss Blackbeard. So that is going to wrap up this video today. Thank you very much for watching. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video